Okay, day one. So just starting out, still at my house. Just trying to get on the road here. Uh, the weather's pretty good. I've got my gear organized in a way I hope that it's gonna work out. Uh, as you can see, I don't have the camping gear. I've got the roto packs, which I need to fill up here. Uh, but I think this bike's gonna be perfect for the Nevada BDR. So today I've got about 350 miles. I'm gonna head up to the Mojave National Preserve, up through the high desert, uh, across the 15 at Baker, and then go up uh, kind of through Death Valley and stay in Beatty, Nevada for the night. All right, so we're headed out of the mountains. So I live in the San Jacinto Mountains of Southern California. So what you see up there is San Gorgonio Mountain. And we're heading down into the Banning Pass because I've got to go through the desert for uh, quite a number of hours. Actually, pretty much going to be in a desert all day, kind of starting out in a low desert and then heading up to the high desert. Uh, so this is Highway 243, kind of near where I live, and it drops down. You can see down below me here, this is the Banning Pass. That's the 10 freeway down there. We've got Morongo Casino. Uh, the Banning Pass carries a lot of uh, railroad traffic, a lot of commercial traffic. It's a major corridor. It's also the path of the San Andreas Fault. So it's ripe for a major earthquake. Just kind of some interesting trivia there. But we're starting out with some pretty beautiful weather. Uh, slight chance of rain later today, but I think I'm going to be uh, kind of in front of the storm. So come on, pull over. There we go. But so far the bike is feeling great. This windshield's working great. Uh, the, my biggest concern on this trip is my butt just getting super, super sore. I don't think this seat is going to be very comfortable, unfortunately, even though it has a gel pad put in it. I don't think it's going to be that great. I couldn't get a seat concept seat in time. And frankly, I'm just spoiled by the GS that I did my last trip on. So anyway, beautiful, beautiful sky this morning, beautiful views, clear air. So yeah, we're going to be cruising all day, cruising on up to Death Valley. Catch you later. Okay, so I'm about halfway through the first day. I am in the Mojave National Preserve. You can see beautiful rock formations behind me. This is a really interesting and beautiful area of the high desert of Southern California. So to give you a sense of where we are, so we just, uh, we went under Interstate 40 about 10 miles ago. In that direction about, oh, 100 miles is Las Vegas straight ahead in that direction about 150 miles is death valley uh interstate 15 is over in that valley up there kind of at our 11 o'clock position so the next town that i'm going to hit is uh baker so i'm actually on kel baker road or kelso baker road is what that shortens to uh, so you come down in this valley and you hit this little uh train depot of kelso i'm going to stop there see if the museum's open but this is one of my favorite areas in california this wide open mojave desert it's actually we're at some elevation here i think around four or five thousand feet so it's actually not hot right now and it's beautiful We've got some clouds bikes running beautifully just purring along like a sewing machine i wish my seat was a little more comfortable but isn't that the complaint of all long distance motorcycles it's always an issue with the seat uh, yeah, I mean, and I wish I had cruise control too, but other than that, this bike is, is great and it's working out really well. This, this wind protection is pretty good. I've got the adjustable slider on the windshield. I've got the, uh, the uh, screen, the little clip on screen there that I can adjust. So pretty comfortable in terms of wind. Yeah, I'm hoping to have time. To, I stopped at Joshua Tree National Park this morning. Uh, I'm hoping to have time to go through Death Valley. I'm away to Beatty, but I'll have to see when I get to Shoshone 
at that junction, see if I have time to run through Death Valley and go to Dante's View. I don't really want to be riding it at night and you know, I'm trying to limit my riding to like eight hours a day and like under 400 miles because on my last trip I just kind of burnt myself out every day going five, six hundred miles or more and riding 10 or 12 hours a day was just too much so I'm trying to slow down, smell the roses a little bit and that's my goal for this trip so anyway we'll catch you guys later. Okay, good morning on day two. There's a wild burrows there. So I'm leaving Beatty, Nevada and I'm going the wrong way. So why am I going the wrong way? Well, here's what's happened and here's a lesson in flexibility for motorcycle traveling is that when I am looking at the weather forecast the next three or four days for Nevada where I'm gonna be riding on the BDR, it's all rain and I'm not comfortable riding in the rain off-road by myself in the middle of the mountains in Nevada with the mud and the snow and who knows what else I'm gonna find. Uh, not only is it kind of uncomfortable to ride in the rain all day, um, but if it's colder and if you're by yourself and there's mud and terrain that you haven't been through before, that's just not a good situation. So what I'm gonna do instead is, and I'm glad I brought my California maps with me and my Death Valley map, is I'm gonna ride through Death Valley, go through Titus Canyon, go up through Eureka Valley, over to Lone Pine, maybe stay in Lone Pine tonight, uh, maybe go up in the White Mountains, and then tomorrow go through over North Pass into Saline Valley, through Death Valley again, and then head south through Death Valley where it's not raining, and it's gonna be pleasant in the 80s, and then start heading south from there. Okay, so this is the entrance to Titus Canyon. You start out on kind of this long, flat dirt road. Helps to carry a little bit of speed to get up on top of the washboard. But you cross this big desert valley. I think this is the south end of the Sarcobatis Plateau. And then we'll uh, wind through Titus Canyon and have a beautiful scenic ride. So come along for the ride. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be nice. Okay, here we go. This is kind of where it starts to get pretty. You can see the road wanders up through these beautiful, colorful canyons. My bike's finally getting some dirt on it. I gotta drop my tire pressure. It's just, I'm getting beat to hell on these washboards and the bike just feels really harsh. I'm not sure why, but the suspension's just really beating me up. So anyway, yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. Let's keep going. Now it's getting a little more interesting. See, we drop into this canyon. You see how the terrain is? I would say it's definitely big bike friendly. I mean, there's there's gonna be some sand towards the end going through the wash. We'll see how we deal with that because I'm not a very good rider in sand, but now look at this beautiful canyon we're going through. And uh, the bike's riding better with the tires. I put them about 26 PSI. And it's riding quite a bit better now. It was just beating me to hell. But man, look at this scenery. It's just inc just incredible stuff. So right now it's uh, October 6th, I think, is today's date. So 
If you came any earlier in the year, it might be a little bit too hot, but if you try to do it in winter, sometimes it's closed. So it's kind of tough, but I think October, November, good months, and then again, you've got a couple good months in the spring, but I've probably ridden through here five or six times, uh, but always in the winter. This is my first time coming through in the fall. Coming up to one of the classic viewpoints that everybody takes a photo of here. We'll uh, stop, take some photos. Whoa, that's, that's really beautiful. Oh. Park facing downhill. Kill the engine. Let the clutch out. You don't really want to go off the cliff here. Okay. Wow, that's really something. Oh. So we're still not in the main, most dramatic part of the canyon, but we're working our way down that direction. And the scenery continues to impress. Sometimes you come around a corner and you get some of these kind of rocks, rocky steps like this. They're not bad. It's totally big bike friendly, but you know, you want to be on your game. You don't really want to go sliding off the edge here. I left my ABS on because I still have plenty of braking power with ABS and then I can just grab a bunch of brake and I don't have to worry about sliding around so ABS works for me on a trail like this so I've, I've arrived at Leadfield which is kind of your halfway point through Titus Canyon here's what the sign says can't believe there used to be a post office here that's crazy very strange so there's some old old mining cabins and buildings over there you can see the workings of the the old mine there this is how it used to look i can't believe it used to look like that that's crazy just crazy okay here we go boys and girls it's the part of the show that everybody signed up for entering into the steep canyon of Titus Canyon and steep walls I mean it's just I don't want to talk too much it's just so beautiful through here so dramatic wow Okay, we're leaving the tighter part of the canyon, starting to get more into an open wash. I can't remember, I think the canyon gets tight tight again down here, but I can't really remember. Um, I think it does, I think that's the slot canyon part, but gotta be a little careful because uh, the road can start to get a little sandy here. Oh yeah, you see down there, it gets, it gets into the tight part of the canyon again, so. Anyway, uh, you just gotta be careful. Sometimes there'll be some sand deep sand or deep gravel here and it'll want to grab your front wheel so just be prepared for that We've only seen two other vehicles this whole time so that's nice too of course it is Tuesday middle of the week so most people are at their are at work and I'm at work too I'm making videos right so yeah this is my office for the day 
Okay, we're getting back into one of the slot canyons again. The trail's gotten pretty loose and sandy, so the bike wants to get into kind of a, a wobble, like a wave back and forth. And the way I'm dealing with it is just trying to let be loose, you know, loosen up the controls, just let it let it correct, let it wobble a bit, and don't fight it. Look at the look at the rocks, the geology. That's really impressive. I got to take another picture. Ooh. Well, yeah, this gravel's pretty deep. Shot. Ooh, yeah, this gravel's pretty deep here. Look at how the rocks folded like that, it's so pretty. Definitely getting warm, I had to open up my jacket, try to get some airflow through here. It's getting a little bit on the warm side, but man, the scenery is, does not get old. I, one thing I will say is this road starts to demand your attention more. This gravel gets deeper and deeper as you kind of get towards the bottom of the canyon here. This is a very cool part of the canyon right here. Oh, I love that angle there with the road and the bike. That's cool. Look at that, that's kind of a cool, it's not really a cave, but you know what I mean. That's pretty cool there. Wow. This is, I gotta take Maggie here. Maggie, my wife, she loves Slot Canyons. I gotta, we've gotta get out here, like maybe even this winter, now that the baby's old enough. Maggie would absolutely die if she saw this. Love slot canyons. Those hikers mean that we must be near the uh, the end of the canyon where it dumps out. There's a trailhead. So if people with cars don't want to drive the whole way through, they can park at the start of the one-way part here and they can hike up. Oh, this is crazy. I think we're almost at the end here. gravel. I'm in the lower part of Titus Canyon, starting to warm up, starting to feel the Death Valley heat again. <laughs> this morning started off really cool, but it's getting hot now. But I mean, the scenery is amazing. Let me flip around. I mean, it's truly, it's just so incredible through here. I never get tired of coming through Titus Canyon. It's just so beautiful and it's so quiet, other than my voice, of course, but it's not a sound in this canyon. 
turning out to be a great day so far. I wish it was a little cooler, but you know, you can't have everything. Yeah, there she is. Coming out into Death Valley, into the actual, oh, it looks like it's windy. Look at all that dust blowing, jeez. Oh great, now we're gonna have to deal with a dust storm as well. That's pretty. So I'm in the Last Chance Mountains of the uh, very northern part of Death Valley National Park. Okay, so I'm on Big Pine Death Valley Road, kind of in my last part of the second day of my trip, which all got changed, obviously. Had a really great ride so far, a beautiful ride through the Joshua Trees and through Joshua Flat, across Eureka Valley. Now I'm headed down towards Big Pine. What I think I'm gonna do is, since I have a few more hours before my day's over, I think I'll ride over to White Mountain and go up there a little bit, kind of check that out. Okay, we're about to start uh, Wakoba Saline Road or North Pass down into Saline Valley and then over South Pass. I think it's around 100 miles of dirt, so pretty long dirt road. You see the sign there says no services available. So the road I just got off of is the road that connects uh, Big Pine over to basically Crankshaft Junction and then over towards Beatty and where I came from yesterday. And this road, Saline Valley, goes south. So got all our supplies snacks plenty of fluids bikes in good shape let's get riding
I left my tires at around 25 PSI yesterday and uh, I didn't feel like airing down or airing up and then airing back down again so So this is the road that a lot of people would use to access the Saline Valley Hot Springs, which is kind of a famous clothing optional hot spring. And no, I will not be taking all my clothes off and going in the hot springs with 80 year old naked guys today. That's not really on the menu. In terms of road conditions, I don't know exactly what to expect. If it's like this the whole way, it's gonna be a cakewalk. But I know Death Valley, there'll be some silt or some sand or some rocks or washboard that goes forever. So you want to stay on your toes, but the scenery is already really beautiful looking down into these valleys. So I've never been on this road before. I've gone over South Pass a number of times and then done Lippincott or Hunter Mountain. But every time I've been here in the winter months, North Pass has been snowed in by like multiple feet of snow up here. So always wanted to come this way. So right now we're still at elevation. It's 57 degrees, still pretty, pretty chilly. Um, almost put in a layer, but, but ended up not doing it. But was using my heated grips this morning to get up here after staying in Bishop last night. I think I'm gonna pause up here at this little ridge to take a photo. So I'm officially in the National Park now, about 10 miles down this dirt road maybe, and past the National Park sign about a mile ago. There's these old ruins of like this old little mining area or something i don't know what they were trying to mine here but like all these old mines they dried up and failed and people moved on and left their stuff behind got old tanks and old buildings kind of cool though this is a very desolate remote part of california people think california is all crowded but nothing could be further from the truth if you know where to go a lot of california is empty and barren like this and beautiful dropped down out of North Pass and ahead of me there at my 11 o'clock that's Saline Valley uh, home of the famous Saline Hot Springs and yeah it's a big beautiful empty desert valley I've dropped an elevation like a huge amount and had to open up all my vents and my jackets starting to get a little bit warm and uh, yeah it looks like I'm gonna drop probably another I don't know thousand feet in elevation uh, to get down to the floor of Saline Valley and then we'll cross over the valley and then we'll climb up over those mountains over there that's South Pass and on the other side of those mountains is Highway 190 which runs between Lone Pine and uh, Panamint Springs basically so anyway the, the road is in pretty decent shape it's just really chattery bumpy marbles you know sharp jagged rocks all over it just it just you know rattles out your teeth but it's uh, nothing challenging a um, few potholes here and there which will make you pucker up a little bit if you're going too fast but Okay, we're in the heart of Saline Valley now. 
and the washboards have gotten terrible on this road it's just like you have to go about 45 to get on top of the washboards the sand dunes over there are beautiful I don't know if those are called the saline valley dunes or what but they're really pretty um, it's only supposed to be 92 today so I was still willing to come this way but uh, as warm as it is this early in the morning it sure seems like it's going to be more than 91 but so I'm not really in the mood to really linger uh, in this valley while it gets hot I would hate to have to change a tire out here in the blazing sun or do something like that anyway um, got to remember to enjoy the scenery look up at the beautiful mountains that ring this valley the beautiful sand dunes and enjoy the desolation and the solitude out here it really is unmatched So if you see those mountains up there, uh, Cerro Gordo, if you've heard of that, is up on the other side of those mountains. And you can't really see it from here, but the top of the salt tram is up there. And uh, this lake over here, I guess saline, dry lake or whatever, um, they used to, you know, uh, mine salt out of it and carry it, <coughs> excuse me, carry it across this valley. And they took it up over these mountains on this these this tramway. And I've actually been to the top. Uh, you can visit the old salt tram um, station at the top. It's a really awesome place to visit uh, if you're going up in the Cerro Gordo area. But I just can't believe that they that they went to the effort required to get salt way over here and move it up these mountains. And I'm talking about like a long time ago. They were able to do that and then they shipped it you know i don't know either to la or san francisco or something but it was a major commodity um it still is but they have you know easier ways of getting it nowadays but you can still see like some of the old equipment out there you see in fact yeah this is it right in here um you can see the, the old uh, support pylons and stuff out there I just passed the sign. Here it is. Bringing salt to the table. See, I'm telling you, I wasn't lying. So it says, designed to be the steepest tramway in the U.S. and recognized as an engineering marvel, the Saline Valley Salt Tram ascends 7,600 feet up the eastern slope of the Inyo Mountains. That would be those beautiful mountains right there. And it descends 5,100 feet to the Owens Valley on the other side. White Smith, an attorney and bishop, and his brothers decided to build the 13.4 mile tramway to ship the unusually pure salt from Saline Valley to California markets. Look at that photo, that's incredible. It says they delivered more than 20 tons of salt per day to rail cars in Owens Valley. That's insane. Construction began in 1911, requiring over a million board feet of timber for tower construction and 53 mile of cable. Horses and mules hauled wagon loads of equipment and supplies up the rugged slopes. In July 1913, the first load of salt was delivered to a railroad terminal near Keeler, California. The operation of the tramway was a brief success, but financial and legal problems forced it to change hands several times. Operations ended by 1930. You can see a photo there of them hauling the salt up. Just really an incredible thing. So I'm riding through this like alluvial fan kind of a deal. The riding's definitely getting more, more interesting with all these rocks embedded here. Really deep gravel, deep sand patches. So really keeps you on your toes. Okay, they're gonna have to find a pace that's comfortable for you. If you go too slow, you kind of dig into the sand. If you go too fast, you start smashing into rocks and stuff and bad things start to happen and bad noises start to happen so I'm going about 30 miles an hour that seems to do the trick and uh, this is a kind of thing where you do kind of want to stand up and you know have a little bit better control of the bike well my goal is to just get through this valley get out of here before it gets too hot 
and get back up towards the highway and take a break, have a drink, have some snacks, when it gets a little bit cooler up there. Okay, man, the last 10 or 15 miles just really beat me up. The washboard and the rocks have just been relentless. It's finally starting to smooth out, but God, this bike just beats you to hell on these roads. It just doesn't absorb the chatter. My hands are like turning to jello. They're like numb from all the vibration, but, but we are gaining elevation and it's finally cooling down, so I don't feel like I'm roasting to death while being vibrated to death at the same time but let's get up to the top of south pass and i'm going to take a break up there and maybe my bones won't be liquefied by then all right well we're out of saline valley <clears throat> that's the way i came from this is a little junction between saline valley Hunter Mountain and uh, South Pass, or which goes over to Highway 190. So down there are the Panamint uh, Dunes and Panamint Valley. And uh, yeah, so that's where I'm headed next. So I've got to get over this little bit of pass here, but I probably only got 10, 15 miles of dirt left. Um, go through Lee Flat and then we'll be back to some pavement, which I'm not going to complain about after I just feel like my bones have been rattled to death. Yeah. 